Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Zakagi here and this is gonna be Yo, Izu, dude, what are you doing here? Oh, oh my bad, this isn't my channel, uh, see ya Okay, I don't know what that was about, but what is up guys, it is your boy Zeta here, back at it again to drop What if Deku had the speed force? Now, on this part, Izukage is going to be featured in, and he is going to be covering one little arc in the series Maybe he might come back, maybe he won't, it's all up to him But, that being said, it's been a minute since my boy's been on the channel, so I figured I'd put him back in a feature for the one time That being said, I don't want to waste you guys' time too much, so we're just going to get started okay so we're gonna start this story off on the day of izuku's birth see in this version of events, Deku was of course going to still be born to Inko and Hisashi Midoriya. However, there will be two major changes to the series which will have major ramifications on Deku's life. Number one, Deku's father is not going to have the same job in the original. Instead, in this version of events, Deku's father is of course going to be a doctor and his mom is going to be a very renowned scientist who is pretty good in, let's say, uh, anatomy or something like that. I don't know, but you know, she's a scientist and she's pretty good at what she does, bottom line, right? That being said, his mother is going to be working for a very big company, a man which is very rich. That being said, Deku, instead of how he grew up in the original, is not going to grow up alongside Bakugo, and Inko is not going to, you know, basically have a, a friend of Mitsuki. She's not going to do that. She's going to have different people around her. That being said, Deku is obviously going to have a way better childhood due to the fact that he doesn't grow around Bakugo, and kids don't really pick on him as much due to the fact that, well, Deku just seems to be one of the normal kids. Deku pretty much has a normal childhood up until the age of four, until one day, Deku basically meets a very good friend by the name of Momo Yayorozu. And in case you guys are wondering who Deku's mom works for, yep, you guessed it, Momo's father. That being said, many people are probably like, yo, doesn't Momo's father own this, this, and this company? Well, I'm just going to change it so that in this version, he's pretty intelligent. Therefore, he owns uh, something similar to Star Labs or something like that, right? Just just a similar uh, tech, tech company, right? That being said, this is when Deku would basically grow up as childhood friends with Momo. Deku would meet her at the age of four, and they would honestly hit it off immediately. One day, however, when Deku would basically find out he's quirkless, Momo would basically be the only one who feels bad for Deku when he gets picked on. Therefore, this leads to Momo actually standing up to Deku a couple of times. And once Deku finds out that he's quirkless, well, he finally starts getting the bully treatment. However, it's way less than in the original canon. Bakugo's not there to instigate most of it. Therefore, the kids who do do it, well, they're a little bit on the classier side, so they're not just going to sit there and bully him because most of them have been taught better. And well, I mean, that's kind of just my point of view. That being said, Momo, however, whenever Deku would get uh, well picked on, she would always come in and help him. She would always be there for Deku. And well, Deku would basically grow up a lot happier with the life that he's going to be having in this version of events. Until one day, when Deku was at the age of seven years old, Deku will of course be at his house at night. And many of you guys know exactly where I'm going to be going with this. This is when Deku's origin story will start. That being said, you guys all know what day this is. The reverse flash, baby. That being said, this is when, well, the man in the yellow suit would of course do the thing to his mother where he stabs her and, well, his father, well, tries to help out with the wound by, well, you know, treating it. He is a doctor. That being said, his prints get on the knife and that means that Deku's father is charged for hom homicide. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Yeah, something like that, right? That being said, Deku at this point would start telling people it was the man in the yellow suit, the man in the lightning. However, nobody would believe him. There's, well, no traces of a man with a yellow suit. There is no proof or evidence that Deku is, well, telling the truth. And to everybody, it kind of just seems as if Deku's just making it up. However, some people in this version of events think that maybe there's a chance that it was somebody else due to the fact that in this world, quirks exist. Powers and, well, kind of metahumans are a real thing in this world. It's not like the normal Earth where there's no powers and this is just completely up unbelievable. So in this version of events, when Deku says that some people who are his friends and fathers kind of believe him for about a year until, well, 
flash forward to more events, Deku just changes. Nobody starts believing him, and Deku, well, ends up growing in a similar fashion to Barry Allen. Of course, Deku would always try to visit his father. However, in this version, Deku is more of a well-behaved kid with Momo's father due to the fact that, well, Deku is, of course, allowed to go see his dad. Because in this version, well, Deku's dad, Asashi, would have never said, hey, don't let my son see me. And he would actually want to see his son. He wants to have at least one person who can believe in him to give him hope. That's all he needs. And Deku would be that person. This would lead to Deku growing up in a nerdy fashion and trying to basically get a job which will help his father get out of prison someday. He wants to prove someday that it was the man in the yellow suit, just like Barry Allen in the show. That being said, everything however is all going to change one night. See, this is when we're now going to be having a time skip to when Deku is 15 years old. At this point, Deku would basically be at Momo's lab, or Momo's father's lab, where, of course, Deku would just be experimenting on some things, and he'd just be doing little nerd things, right? This is when Deku would be in the, in the lab with Momo's father. He would basically just be wrapping up some little experiments, which he's helping him out with. He's doing his science... Uh, excuse me. He's doing his science experiment, and, well... This basically leads to Deku, um, you know, getting a good grade and all that stuff. And this is when they would basically go to, well, Momo's father's lab. It's right at the top of the building. And this is when he would open up, like, the, the part where the lightning is going to go through. He would, of course, open it. This is where a bunch of chemicals would just be all around him. And this is when the night of the accelerator happens. In this version of events, some of you guys may be a little angry at this. However, I low-key, this is one of the little stories, one of the very few stories, where I will, of course, be adding other characters from the other series. See, I kind of want to do a little bit of an actual, like, CW Flash thing, where Deku has to face different problems than Barry, different people, and some similar people. So it's all going to kind of jumble up to be... Like a, a very weird dynamic to say the least. However, it is going to be extremely entertaining. Reverse Flash is going to be maybe the only villain that I bring into the series. I still do not know if I want to bring in another speedster. However, time will only tell that. Me and Izu, if Izu wants to continue the project, might have to think about that. That being said, this is when Deku would of course get struck by the lightning bolt. The one that chooses Deku. This is when Deku would of course go into well a coma for a couple of months and Deku at this point would be at the age of 15 years old he had just turned 15 mind you actually no let's say he had just turned 14 right this is when Deku would go into a coma for 10 months where Momo and Momo's father would consistently see Deku just his heartbeat stop the machines wouldn't be able to register everything and this is when Deku would of course be saved by Star Labs or Harrison Wells this would lead to Deku, of course, being saved by the Reverse Flash, the man who shall one day be his greatest enemy. And this is when, of course, Deku, 10 months later, would finally wake up from the explosion of the night, where Deku would wake up hyperventilating, saying, <sighs> as he would open his eyes wide, he would immediately see all the tech around him as Deku would start to, like, freak out. This is when two people would come up to him and say, "My, our names are... Cisco and Caitlyn. This is when they would both introduce themselves, and I had to add them. Like, I could have just replaced them with other people, but Cisco, I love Cisco and Caitlyn, bro. Cisco ain't Cisco without Caitlyn. Come on now. That being said, this is when they would basically be the age which they were in the series of the actual version of events in Flash. So, Cisco and Caitlyn will both be the same age. That being said, this is when Deku would basically see them and they would begin to run tests on him, telling him what happened. Deku would find out that he was struck by a bolt of lightning. And this is when Deku would at this point just be like, guys, guys, I feel great. I feel fine. Deku would look at himself in the mirror and be like, lightning gave me abs? And this is when he would just be like, maybe it's a side effect of the lightning bolt. Deku would basically proceed to just grab his clothes and Deku would throw them on as he would immediately rush to Momo's house. However, this is when Deku would arrive and immediately as soon as Deku knocks on the door, Momo answers it. Deku would see Momo and she would jump on him and she would smile. And Deku would give her the greatest hug that he could ever muster. She would then give him a big kiss on the forehead and say, Where have you been? I've missed you so much. I saw you die. As Deku would explain to her that he's better than he's ever felt before. 
and that there's something he's dying to tell her. This is when Momo's father would come in and Deku would kind of just stay a little silent. As it's at this point that, you know, Momo's father would look at him and just be like, Deku. As immediately they would all hug him. Momo's mother as well. I feel like I should give them names. I'm going to go with Momo's father with, I'm going to call him, um, let's see, uh, Barry. I'm going to call him Harry. I'm going to call him, ha no, I'm going to call Dave. Yeah, yeah, Harry and his mother's name is going to be Felicity. Yeah, Felicity. Yeah. Yeah, those are your names that I'm definitely going to remember. That being said, this is when Harry would basically look at Deku and say, You're alive. I I thought we lost you. As Deku would look at him and say, Well, I'm here. As Deku would smile, this is when they would have a giant celebration feast. However, this is when Momo's mother would come in. Uh, this being, what name did I give her? Uh, Oliver Queen's assistant. Felicity. Yeah, Felicity. I think that that name's a little too hard. I'm going to call her Iris, all right? Iris would come in and I'm going to call the father Harry, I believe it is what I said. Yeah, Harry and Iris. All right. This, it's going to sound a little weird because now you guys are probably like imagining da Barry's father and Iris just together. Oh, that's such a weird sight. Anyways, that being said, this is when they would celebrate and she would come in with a dinner to which she almost spills it. But Deku in an instant would use the speed force's power to catch it all and put it on the table. Everybody would look at Deku completely astonished as they would say, Kid, you got your quirk? This is when they would all surround Deku and just start patting him, like telling him it's so awesome. As on site, uh, what's it called? Harry would take Deku immediately to the quirk doctor, to which Deku would be told that Deku probably does have a quirk, but their technology isn't great enough to track it. So his quirk is just going to be named by himself and Deku would choose to call it the Speed Force. Deku at this point would smile and this one they would all go home just saying that Deku finally has a quirk. Deku would arrive home as it's at this point that Momo and Deku would be up at Momo's room just playing some video games as Deku would tell her that he needs to talk to her. Momo would put the game off and this is when Deku would basically look at her as he would say that during this time that he was in a coma, he missed so much time with her. He missed so much time to tell her how he felt and Momo would look at Deku as her eyes would just water up. Deku would hold her hand as he would tell her, I love you, Momo. I've, I've loved you since the day that you saved me. I loved you when you helped me with the bullies. I loved you when your family took me in. And I loved you even when you had your first boyfriend. It's always been me looking at you from the sidelines. And I don't know if you feel the same, but it's been killing me to not tell you this. Momo would look at Deku give him a giant hug and say that she's been waiting 15 years for him to tell her that as momo would kiss deku right on the lips and they would both just proceed to make out it's at this point that momo's father would open the door and say hey kids as he would see what's going on he would immediately shut the door and just be like uh deku and momo as you know uh felicity would just be like yeah, kind of figured that he loved her. You know the way he looks at our daughter. As he would say, yeah, but I, you know, I never thought he'd tell her. As he would say, I mean, he was away from us for 10 months. It was going to happen eventually. This is when they would both just kind of sigh. They'd both walk inside and they'd have a little bit of a talk about this weird dynamic. As they would say that it's not going to be weird if they don't let it be weird. And they would just have a weird, awkward talk. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. That being said, this is when basically the 10 months would actually be right around the corner. And as for the sludge villain, that is of course going to be captured by All Might in this version. Another kid is going to be going down there and let's just say that All Might saves him instead of Deku. However, the kid never jumps onto his leg because he does have a quirk and All Might just goes away scot-free, leading to Mirio being the one who inherits one for all. That being said, this is when Deku would spend the next 10 months training on his powers. However, by the first month, Deku would realize that he can't do this alone, and he would finally return to Star Labs, asking for their assistance. As it's at this point that Deku and Momo would have tried for about one month to understand Deku's powers, but they really couldn't improve them on what they already were. Deku at this point could move at, let's say, 700 miles an hour, and Deku was extremely fast. I mean, he has a very youthful body. That being said, this is when Deku would go to Star Labs and they would run some tests on Deku which reveal that his power is not a quirk. It's something completely different. It's something on a completely different level. It's with him on an atomic level. I mean, quirks are part of your DNA, but this is 
different. It didn't just come in when you were four. It's something that was embedded within your soul. And Deku would just be like, huh? As Momo was actually there when he heard that. This is when Deku would proceed to, for the next nine months, train with him. Sisko would create a bunch of gadgets for Deku to train. And he would, of course, create the beautiful, beautiful treadmill that Deku, that Barry has in the original Flash. That being said, Deku would spend the next months doing, well, basic uh, Flash training. And this is when Deku and Momo would honestly just spend this entire time just finally being together as a couple. Deku and Momo are so incredibly happy and well, Deku is just so happy that he finally got to tell her about his true feelings. Deku finally got to tell her how he's been feeling for years. And now Deku finally has a quirk. She never has to protect him again. Now Deku can finally do what he's always wanted to. Protect Momo. Give her the love that he's always wanted to give her. And Deku has been spending the last 9-10 months giving her the best time of her life. Deku has been nothing more than the perfect boyfriend. And Momo and Deku have both been training relentlessly for Deku to get more... More more speed i was about to say more faster but i'm pretty sure that's wrong so more speed deku would by the time that he's finally going to go to the entrance exam would be entering mach 2 territory and deku at this point would have finally mastered moves similar to the sonic punch and uh let's see he can do the little whirlwind with his hands where he creates a bunch of like air he even has the ability to like uh let's see like phase his hand and go through thing kind of like uh the reverse flash can but that's pretty much the extent to deku's abilities due to deku actually being smart and not being dumb like the flash in the actual show where he just stands in front of people and he's like hey be good don't do this and then it gives the villain a chance to hit him deku does not do any of that deku don't play no games he knows what it's like to just completely be just fondled and deku will never feel like that ever again or at least deku vowed to himself that he would never that being said momo seeing deku's extreme growth would of course train herself and this would lead to her getting so much more confident than in the original that being said this is when the day of the quirk exam or no the day of the u.s um entrance exams yes i was having a little mental brain fart but yeah the day of the entrance exams would finally arrive and this is when deku would basically go into well ua they would arrive in a limo and people would immediately turn their heads towards their direction as they both are actually going into the recommendation exam they're not even going to go in and take the robot portion so due to the fact that i don't really know how this little uh you know recommendation exam truly goes i'm kind of just gonna say that deku and momo both pass they're both extremely intelligent due to the fact that well deku quite literally has been trying to spend the last let's say he was seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen he spent the last seven years why didn't i not not just get that off the, the top of my head i'm so dumb anyways seven years trying to get smart enough so he can catch the man who put his father in in well jail and that being said, Deku is, well, pretty intelligent. That being said, Deku, during the 10 months, would have definitely had his thoughts about whether the man who killed his mother that night has a similar ability to his. Maybe he has a quirk similar to that. Maybe he's a speedster too. And that's why it seemed to be a man in lightning. And Deku vowed to one day break his father out of jail and someday help everybody. Be the hero that his mother always thought he could be. Deku is now not going to become some forensic scientist. Deku is going to become a hero so he can save so many people's lives. This way, not only will he be helping his father, but he'll be helping so many other people never have to go through the same tragedy that Deku went through. They'll never have to experiment anything like that. And during the 10 months, Deku would have been taught multiple various forms of martial arts and combat. So Deku is pretty well off when it comes to fighting ability and stuff like that. That being said, this is when Deku and Momo would basically go home and Izu hit it. They get home and got to studying all night. Every subject you could think of, they did it. And the next morning, Izuku and Momo went to have breakfast and Momo's dad was sitting down and said, you two woke up late, is something wrong? And they both looked at each other and smiled, nodding their head no. So for the week leading up to UA's opening, Izuku and Momo have been getting a lot more familiar with each other and becoming more comfortable as a couple. So the day when UA finally opens up, 
they both are, you know, taken care of by the numerous butlers and maids in the house. Since Harry and Iris are pretty much never at home, they're always working, so the butlers made their breakfast, got their uniforms ready, and drove them to school in a blacked out limo. They stepped out and people recognized them from when they came to the exams a few weeks ago, but still, they were amazed. And the two walked together into school, and when they got to their class, Bakugo was arguing with Ida, but he stopped and looked at the two, and he rolled his eyes and thought to himself, Ugh, here comes more just like engine legs over here. Izuku and Momo sit next to each other and just wait for their homeroom teacher to get in, but the class started getting louder and louder until Aizawa burst out from underneath the table from his sleeping bag and said, Can you all just shut up? I'm trying to get some sleep. And everyone was confused who this guy even was, and Aizawa said he was their homeroom teacher, and if they keep annoying him, they'll be expelled. Hearing that this guy was their teacher, everyone sort of got on their best behavior, but Bakugo still didn't care and had his legs up on the table. So Aizawa said, Ugh, or whatever, get your PE gear and meet me outside. But before they did, Oraka mentioned that weren't they supposed to have some assembly to welcome the new students? But Aizawa told them those little gatherings won't amount to much on their journey to become a hero, so it shouldn't be a problem. So Oraka, you know, she was like, okay, bro, I see your reasoning. So everyone goes and collects their gear. They go to the locker room and go change. And Mineta, he tries to peep through the little hole, but Izuku is not having it, especially with Momo on the other side. So the entire time he was standing guard in front of that peephole to make sure perverts like Mineta wouldn't be able to see anything. So after they're finished, they head out to the fields where they meet Aizawa and he's waiting there with this tablet looking device in his hand and a ball. So he calls up the person with the most points and in this case it would be Bakugo still because Izuku didn't take the traditional entrance exams, he just got in through recommendation. So Bakugo would go up and Aizawa asks him what was the furthest he's ever thrown in middle school and Bakugo just says a really slow number, like 70 meters or something. Still pretty impressive for a middle schooler, but nothing compared to what he was about to do. So Aizawa tells him to throw the ball, but instead use his quirk this time. And Bakugo, he tries it out and he throws it and it goes over 700 meters. It goes around 705. And Aizawa is impressed and everyone is amazed. That length, that is seriously impressive. So they go on to the other events and and they're like long jump, uh, sprints, 100 meter dashes, but, but all of these are dominated by Izuku. Literally his quirk is that versatile that basically anything uh, Aizawa throws at Izuku, he can do with his quirk. And people like Bakugo and Todoroki and Ida are watching him and they're sizing up to him like, who's this guy? Like, why is he so strong why is this quirk basically good in every single situation and bakugo he's getting like really pissed off and when it comes to izuku's time to throw the ball he just grabs the ball and starts spinning his hand in a circle and throws it further than 700 meters it goes 1300 meters and that was conservative because Aizawa saw that Izuku wasn't going all out and when he tried to erase his quirk he couldn't do anything. Like it's not something he could erase, it's not a mutant quirk he doesn't think, so why? Well of course we know it's not a quirk in the first place so he wouldn't be able to do that. But anyways, after all the tests are complete, Bakugo is in 5th in the overall quirk apprehension rankings. It goes from Izuku to Momo to Todoroki to Ida and then Bakugo. His quirk just didn't really translate to anything else like push-ups which his quirk can't really help in any way shape or form. So Bakugo seeing these rankings is absolutely livid. He is mad at everyone who came above him and he's wondering to himself how he got this weak, how is he below these weaklings, these side characters. All this time, Bakugo's position as the strongest has never been tested. Since Izuku wasn't around, everyone just worshipped him as the next number one hero. 
So after the test outside, everyone returned and changed in the locker rooms and just returned to class for regular subjects like math, algebra, you know, the usual. So after school, uh, Izuku and Momo, their butler comes pick them up, you know, they call them in and they pull up in the limo as well and this time they're with some of their classmates and they're seeing this and they're like, oh, they're rich rich. So people like Su and uh, Uraraka see this and they're pretty, pretty impressed. When they get home, there isn't much to do, so not much to explain, so let's just switch to the next day. And when they get into class, they're expecting Aizawa to be there, but they don't see anyone. And when the class is filled and everyone's there, they still haven't seen their homeroom teacher and wondering, like, where is he? But then All Might busts through the door and says, coming through the door like a normal person. Some of the students were shocked and shouted, All Might! And he was like, okay, everyone, calm down, calm down. And he explains about the hero versus villains test and basically that Aizawa left it for them to see how they would act in a villain situation just like that in a enclosed building. With that said, the walls behind them flip open and reveal their hero suits. And for his outfit, Izuku actually got Star Labs to make it and it looks basically identical to Barry Allen's suit. So when the class meets at the observation room, Izuku sees Momo's outfit and he's... His eyes are wide and he's like, whoa, I did not expect that. But hey, Izuku's enjoying it. So when it comes to the teams, of course, Ida asks how the whole team system would work. And All Might just says, well, I'm going to pick at random. And Ida is saying in his head, well, that's such a dumb way to pick. But the teams end up almost exactly the same with Uraraka being swapped out for Momo. Because, I mean, why not? They're the power couple. So as soon as Bakugo and Ida are allowed into the building to, you know, set up because the villains do get to set up first, Momo turns to Izuku and says, promise me you're gonna make this a team effort because I know you can just run in there and touch the bomb anyways. And Izuku, he's like nervously laughing because that was his plan, but he's like, yeah, uh, pr promise, yeah, yeah, sure. So as soon as they enter Bakugo, he's gunning straight for them because not, not because it's Izuku, because in canon he went for him because of the vendetta he had for Izuku and you know he had this strange power. But now it's because they beat him in the quirk apprehension test. So he wants to make sure to himself that he's stronger than the both of them. So he's going in head first. So Izuku gets into the building and he thinks for a second and he's like, well, if she won't allow me to go by myself, well, why don't bring her? So Izuku picks up Momo bridal style and speeds up to the top floor and they realize the bomb wasn't up there because Bakugo and Ida were actually being strategic and put it on one of the lower floors. So Izuku had to go floor from floor while carrying Momo, which it wasn't really that much work, but he finally found it on the fifth floor. So Izuku gets there and he just sees Ida and he's wondering where Bakugo is. Maybe he's in a corner somewhere just waiting to jump out and launch an explosion at them. So Izuku is going in with caution. He turns to Momo and says, make a massive shield. I'm going to go look for Bakugo and I think you can take Ida, right? And Momo says, who do you think I am? And Izuku just smiles and says, I know you got it. So he runs off while Momo deals with Ida. The reason Izuku is doing this is because mainly he just wants to give Momo something to do because he can literally just run in and touch the bomb, they win. But he wants to cover all their bases so Momo can deal with Ida and potentially touch the bomb while he can go for the other option to capture both of them. So Izuku goes looking for Bakugo and he hears these banging noises and so he like runs towards them. And when he does, he sees a wall explode and Bakugo coming out just completely drenched in sweat because he's been doing this for a while, like he's trying to find them and he hasn't. So Bakugo sees Izuku and he's like, ah, oh, there you are. And he marches towards Izuku and launches an explosion, but Izuku starts vibrating all the atoms in his body and going completely intangible. The explosion just goes right through Izuku and he speeds behind Bakugo and starts punching him rapidly. Bakugo falls onto the ground but he's not gonna give up that easily. And while Izuku is walking away he says, huh, You think you've won? Well think again. And Izuku turns around to witness Bakugo pull the pin on his gauntlet and he was going to run but the explosion sent him back flying into a wall. 
because Izuku just wasn't expecting the magnitude of the explosion to be that great. So Bakugo slowly starts to get up and he walks over as the smoke from his explosion clears, but he sees nothing. And he gets worried and turns around and sees Izuku with a burn mark right in the middle of his chest. And Izuku says, nice try, but you'd have to be stronger than that. And he starts rapidly punching Bakugo over and over in his chest, going Mach 2 speed. And this is wearing out Bakugo and he eventually falls over unconscious because this was too many blows and they're powerful blows at that. And Bakugo's body just couldn't take it. So he was knocked out and as Izuku was getting ready to tie him up, he hears hero team wins. Meanwhile, Momo was actually doing good work on Ida because of her training over the 10 months and Ida's carelessness. She managed to get an upper hand on Ida and win it for her and Izuku. And with that, both Izuku and Momo and Ida returned to the observation room while Recovery Girl had to get her robots to go get Bakugo and bring him back into her office to start nursing him back to health. Meanwhile, in the observation room, All Might was asking anyone for inputs on the fight and they didn't really have much to say because that match was almost flawless. Izuku could have ran in but he decided to divvy out the work making sure he didn't do everything. I mean it was fair, it was fun to watch, what more could you want? Now with the team win under their belt, Izuku and Momo decided to go out and celebrate, but both finished off doing the little portion of the heroes versus villains stuff, and this is when Deku and Momo basically decided that they were going to be going out to celebrate. See, Momo at this particular time was actually feeling a little bit of some exquisite food, something that they can't exactly get in Japan. This is when Deku would say, so what are you in the mood for? As Momo would look at Deku, she would kind of like bend down towards him and she would say, how about some Paris food? As Deku would look at her and say, Paris? You really want to go to Paris? She'd say, yeah, I mean, why not? As Deku would be like, um, sure thing. I mean, we might as well. This one, Momo would be like, all right, then I'll get the jet to take us there. As Deku would say, why don't I just use my super speed? She would say, come on, let's enjoy the ride. As Deku would look at her and be like, what kind of ride are we talking about here? Momo would just blush and like be like, okay, stop that. And this is when Deku would just be like, come on, as Momo was like, no. And this is when they would basically get in the get in the plane and they would quite literally just fly out to Paris. Momo would just send her father a text and he would be like, yep, they went out to Paris. As you know, this one Iris would just be like, oh my God, they really did that? Not gonna lie, I paused the recording because someone came in and annoyed me. I don't know if you even can catch it because I'll probably edit it out. But that being said, he would look at Iris and be like, yeah, they went to Paris. And she would look at him and just be like, those kids. As he'd be like, yeah, I mean, as much as I want to ground them right now, what would we do without them? Iris would look at Harry. She's being the mother of Momo. Harry being the mother of Yorozu. And she would just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, whatever. They, they're going to be back tomorrow. I mean, she's with Deku anyways. He has super speed now. And she has an incredible quirk. They're both going to become great heroes in the future. So there's nothing for us to worry about. This one, they would both look at each other and be like, so, uh, you know, if they're going to be having their fun, why don't we have ours? As... Uh, they would begin to do the naughty naughty and i can say that because they are grown ass adults all right i can say that because of that that being said this is when they would basically be flying out to paris at this point he and her would basically just have a ice cold apple juice you know i know you guys can feel me when i say ice cold apple juice mm, slaps bro um i don't like i don't want to overhype it but oh my god ice cold apple juice dude that is such a banger like y'all will never understand that feeling of like just pouring in some like some nice pieces of ice and then the apple juice is already cold but it don't matter you put it in there and then you on top of that you throw it in the cooler mm, it's crispy especially like the one that has a lot of sugar in it because the one that's like the one that's like kind of butt cheeks the one that isn't really that like um that have it doesn't really have that much uh taste to it that one's kind of but but that being said this is when they would basically arrive and they would have basically just have been well getting ready to get there as about two hours would go by and they would have been using a super fast jet to say the least they would finally arrive and this is when they would basically just 
pretty much spend the rest of the entire day and almost the rest of the night there. This is when it would be about 3 in the morning and Momo and Deku would both after sightseeing, after having a little boat ride through the canals, after eating some of that good old Paris bread, climbing the Eiffel Tower and all that stuff, discovering something that doesn't exist. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys got that, but they did that. They would basically end up going home. Now, on the way home, they would... Um, they would partake in some very unholy actions. Momo would, of course, get on her knees and begin to pray because that's just what she do. You know, she's good. You know, like she, you know, she she be doing that good stuff. You know, got the Bible in her hands and all and all, and, and all of that, right? That being said, this is when they are basically on their way home. And well, after that, they basically have really nothing to do. After that point, they basically have a rest of a normal week at school, except for basically the fact that in this version, Deku is going to be class president. See, in the original version of canon, Deku had his of course loving personality, and he had just so much kindness emanating off of him, as well as intelligence. This version of Deku has all of that except he has confidence as well, and he also has the nerve to become a class president. That being said, when he is chosen, he actually accepts the role quite well, and Momo actually is chosen as well due to the fact that she is just intelligent, and she would make a great leader, you know, she was born for that type of position. That being said, this one the normal week of school would happen and of course you know the little press would try to break in and instead of Ida like struggling to tell everybody that immediately Deku would look outside phase through a bunch of people realize what's going on go back inside have a megaphone and just be like guys we literally all have superpowers worthy of being pro heroes and you are running away from the press as they would all just be like oh yeah huh and it's at this point that they basically all are just like, yeah, the, the, the kid has a point. As they're all just like, can't believe we were afraid of the press. As, well, this is when they would have a rest of a normal week at school. This is when basically everybody would end up calming down, of course. And, well, the next couple of days basically pass by. It's at this point that, you know, the end of the day, or no, 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 one day passes by and Friday's right around the corner. Now, this is when they would basically go into class and have an, of course, normal day. However, this is when they are all told about the USJ event and what is going to basically partake in all this stuff. Aizawa would basically give them all a little form for their parents to all have to sign, telling them that they're going to be having a little bit of rescue training. As everybody would basically take that little form home, they would all, of course, get them signed. However, after Deku does that, he would ask Momo if it's cool for them to stop by, you know, Star Labs, as he wants to get in some training today maybe she would be like yeah of course it's totally fine and they would both end up basically speeding off over there with Deku carrying her just like he did in the last part on Izukage's part that being said this is when Deku and Momo end up pulling up to Star Labs and he basically ends up telling them about the USJ stuff and how well everything's basically going to go down he doesn't know the exact location of it but he does know that there will be an event where they're going to be practicing rescuing this is when Harrison Wells or Ebar Thon would of course hear about this and immediately get intrigued. He's like, huh, he's going to be there and a bunch of hero students are as well. While I may not be able to crush him, I can crush his morale. As he would of course begin to, you know, scheme up a little bit. At this point, he definitely looks for the League of Villain because he's trying to make Deku's life a living hell. And that, my friends, that he will do. That being said, this is when, well, Deku would basically leave Star Labs. He would, of course, hang out with Cisco a little bit and Caitlyn. And they would actually end up going out for a movie that same day, which, you know, they go to Deku's little uh, private movie theater. They have a pretty good time. And Cisco is just like, dude, you are so rich. Even if you didn't have your speed, your life would be awesome. Deku would look at him and be like, if I didn't have a quirk, I don't know about all that. And Cisco would just be like, it's not a quirk, dude. It's the speed force. As Deku would be like, oh, yeah, right. And this is when they would basically all just get scared as the movie has a jump scare right on this part. Anyways, this is when basically Deku would feel a gust of wind go through the house. As Deku would really just brush it off. And it's at this point that, well, the reverse flash is standing right behind them. Just looking at Deku as he just thinks... The time will come soon. As he blitzes out of there, and immediately, this is when we're basically going to be skipping to the day of the USJ. It's at this point that all of the kids basically get on the bus, and this is when they all would proceed to just 
go on their way. Uh, Suyu would talk about who the strongest is. Of course, it would be a giant debate about whether it's Todoroki or Deku. Due to the fact that they both, of course, ended up taking out their, you know, their opposing team, the villains, out immediately. I mean, Deku could have if he just used the speed, and Todoroki did it immediately. That being said, this is when they basically end up chalking it up to them both being strong, but they don't really know who the strongest is. Todoroki would have been like, huh, I'm the strongest, you know, I'm the son of the number two hero. And Deku would have just been thinking that eh, it doesn't really matter who's stronger. The only thing that matters is that they're both strong. It's at this point that he and Momo would be in the back just hitting the, you know, and it's at this point that they would basically proceed to, well, arrive at the USJ. To this point that, of course, they would go inside, they would get their speech from 13, and it's at this point that Deku would basically just look around at the area as he's looking at the opposite direction. This is when immediately a black mist would appear, to which Bakugo and Kirishima would, of course, jump at to try to attack, just like in the original canon. However, they would, of course, go through him, and it's at this point that Kurogiri would immediately recognize Deku with that red scarlet speedster suit that he has on, and trust me, guys, Deku's hero costume not always gonna be not always gonna be red it's gonna be different he's gonna have different colors trust me that he will he's gonna have multiple different versions i'm thinking that i might low-key give him the zoom color wave comment down below if you guys think that's a good idea give him giving him the zoom color wave and having him get so fast that his lightning turns blue or should i give him the white color wave and have his learn lightning just honestly stay the same you know just yellow that being said, let me know what you guys want. Zoom or uh, do you guys want Godspeed? Either one. He's probably not going to get as fast as Godspeed ever. But, you know, he'll probably get as fast as Zoom. By the, like, like Season 2 Flash, right? He'll probably get, like, that fast. Like, after the tacky on Particle stuff. He'll probably get to that point. That being said, this is when Kurogira would basically immediately recognize Deku. And upon inspection, he would realize that that's the man that the reverse flash warned them about. Immediately, he would teleport him away as far as he physically can. The furthest location that he possibly knows. And it's at this point that Deku would get sent hundreds, if not thousands of miles away. As Deku is literally stuck in the middle of nowhere. Deku would be looking around as he would literally see a kangaroo just jumping around. The kangaroo would start jumping over to him. And Deku would look at it as he's just like, where am I? It's immediately on the this moment as a kangaroo literally punches Deku straight in the face and it starts jumping up and down as Deku just like I don't have time for this he literally just tries to run as fast as he can to the nearest place and this one he would realize where he's at as immediately he would turn towards the direction he has to go and blitz there as he would get there about a minute after everything this after that one precious minute would pass by, this is when Deku would basically arrive back at the USJ, as Deku would see two very frightening scenes. Number one, Deku would see Momo and Karin Kaminari actually getting overwhelmed by the, by the large amount of villains that was by their section. He would also see Mineta about to get slaughtered by the water, water area villains. Deku would see that and have to make an incredibly tough decision. He would immediately blitz towards Mineta's direction, walking over the water. He would save Mineta in an instant. He would then run across the water so fast he creates a, a tornado, a whirlpool inside the water, which ends up pulling in all of the villains. And it's at this point that Deku would basically proceed to take Mineta and Suyu back to land. It's at this point that Deku would blitz over to Momo, and as he does, Momo was getting picked up by her shirt, as she would have ended up trying to use her staff to hit the final villain that was left. However, she was kind of out of energy, and it's at this point that Deku would blitz over there, as he would literally punch the man so many times in the gut that the man would just puke out blood, and Momo would get caught by Deku as he asked her if she's safe. She would say that she is and that other people need help too, as Deku would say that that's noted and that he has, you know, he's very well aware of that. She would say that he has to go now. As Deku would nod his head, he would immediately get out of there, as it's at this point that Deku would notice that Aizawa is in deep stuff, like he's in deep S-H-I-T. And talking about deep S-H-I-T, have you guys seen season 7 of The Flash, like with the Godspeed stuff, I believe it is? I haven't quite yet gotten to that. I'm pretty sure that the last thing that I saw of The Flash was uh, the little genius guy, the Brainiac character, who had like the giant chair, and he had like a wife who was willing to do anything for him. That was basically where I left off with The Flash, because once right now I'm on like season 
season three and like really nothing is going on something about a flashpoint and like other people getting powers the series sometimes doesn't really like to make sense but you know it's a good series overall and in case you're just here for the speed force i would 1000 percent recommend going to watch cw flash that being said this is when deku would see aizawa getting his head quite literally bashed in by the nomu as the nomu would literally have aizawa's head just gripped by the palm of his hand he would be crushing aizawa's head on the pavement as aizawa would just be bleeding out this is when the nomu would look towards deku's direction as he just continues to bash his head in and deku would immediately save Aizawa as he has him and puts him on the ground the Nomu would turn towards Deku as it would rush at him as it would let out a holler which would be heard by the heavens at this point Deku would look at the Nomu and begin to land consecutive blows noticing that nothing is happening and it's at this point that he would look towards Aizawa as Aizawa is picking up his, his head trying to disable the Nomu's abilities as much as he can he would look at Deku and say that that thing has multiple quirks you need to get out of here Deku, as he would cough out blood. It's at this point that Deku would look at Aizawa. He would say, I'm not going to leave you here. And Deku would rush out of there as he would run away five point who knows how many miles he has to run away. It's at this point that Deku would have realized, seeing as this version of Deku is much, much smarter than the CW's Flash. I mean, he had the greatest, like, like literally the greatest people to teach him the things that he knows. Plus, you know, he did spend 10 months with Harrison Wells already. So... And to this point, point that Deku would use the super sonic punch and he would punch the Nomu's head so hard the literal brain just splatters everywhere and it's at this point that Aizawa who had just barely been able to erase the Nomu's quirks for long enough to stop the regeneration would pass out into unconsciousness it's at this point that Deku would fall onto his knees Momo would come rushing in and she would say it's Zuku she would immediately be worried for him Deku would say don't worry we we did it she would be out of breath completely. Momo would look at him and hug him on the ground. As Suyu and Mineta would arrive, they would immediately thank Deku and tell him thank you so much for saving their lives. That if it wasn't for him, they both would have 100% died. Deku would look at them as he would say, don't mention it. And it's at this point that Aizawa and Suyu, I mean, no, Mineta and Suyu would both just be grateful. It's at this point that barely, All Might would bust down the door and he would say, I am here. As it's at this point that All Might would arrive. Basically, as All Might arrives, he would see the situation. And he would actually go down to Deku as he would put his hand on his shoulder. He would tell Deku that he did a great job protecting the students while he wasn't here. Deku would look at All Might, smile at his direction, and they would both let their guard down as All Might would laugh. And he'd be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you know, I'm doing a horrible impression. But yeah, All Might would do that. He would thank Deku and tell him that his quirk is just so amazing. He might even be faster than him. Deku would smirk thinking that he might. He'd say, I could smoke you in a race any day. All Might would immediately just begin to say that they might as well race someday. And this is when Deku would say, yeah, I'd like that. It's at this point that Deku would be looking at All Might as immediately from Deku's corner of his eye, he can see some red lightning approaching. As it's at this point, All Might has his hand on Deku's shoulder still. Deku just isn't fast enough to react. And in that slight second that he didn't be that he didn't wasn't fast enough, the reverse flash would appear as he would pierce his hand straight through All Might's heart and say that you let your guard down, Flash. Now, All Might's gonna pay. As he would take his hand out, All Might would then fall onto the ground. His blood just leaves his throat. Immediately, Deku would yell out, No! As it's at this point that the reverse flash would run out of there as fast as he possibly can. He would then end up saving any of the remaining villains that are there. And that would be about a good 50 of them. That being said, Deku would fall, would look at the reverse flash and chase after him. As he would have ended up leaving everybody behind. Deku would start trying to catch up to the reverse flash. But there is no hope for him. And the reverse flash quite literally proceeds to beat the ever living just anything off of Deku. Just the bricks off of Deku. Nearly killing him mind you. Deku would be left in a near death state. To which the heroes would actually have to track Deku's location down. And the only people with the tech re uh, well, good enough to save Deku's life would be Star Labs. 
and recovery girl after they stabilized his condition that being said he would wake up in star labs about a couple of hours later and deku would be told that if it wasn't for his fast regenerative abilities he probably would have died out there today this one deku would say that he doesn't need to know that he needs to find that man in the yellow suit he killed his mother and he's gonna pay he even took all my what are they gonna do without the symbol of peace this one caitlin would say that it's not all about all my he believed in you and told you that someday you would make a suitable a suitable number one hero maybe that day is not soon but it'll come soon deku you just have to wait deku would look at her he, he would say that there's no time that man who killed his mother is out there and he's gonna do everything that he can to stop him he would try to stand up but realize that he's weak and it's at this point that recovery girl would come in and kiss deku on the cheek this would heal up this would heal him up almost immediately but on on the moment that deku heals up deku would just pass out for the for the rest of the day just completely he needed to rest his body due to you know um the way that her quirk works and it's at this point that deku would basically just fall into a rage where deku just is simply unconsolable this would lead to the two-week break which we basically have in the original and this would basically lead to deku just falling into a, a state which barry fell into when he first met the reverse flash where he he just has one thing on his mind and that is revenge that is of course not the mindset that deku should have however for the entire week momo would basically try to help doku deku i said doku but deku trying to help him cope with the situation of all Might's death and what ended up happening that being said deku would spend a lot of time thinking by himself being with momo and overall just trying to be around people who can help him deal with how he's feeling cisco caitlin momo harrison his classmates they're all trying to help deku feel better and in this attempt they would all take deku out to the mall to basically try to get his mind off of the situation that being said this is basically where we are now going to be jumping into deku finally realizing that well letting this man get into his head more than he already has would just be the wrong move deku realizes this a lot sooner than barry would in the original version of you know the flash and deku since he is a much smarter person wouldn't fall by the same tricks that you know the normal barry allen falls into because he's very susceptible to emotion much like deku however deku is surrounded by people and he does have momo there to help him who is similar to Iris, which always seems to help Barry. So with that being said, this is basically when they would, I know you guys all probably thought that I was about to end off the part here. You guys are probably like, oh no, but no, I, I'm not, I'm not about to end it. Speaking of, you know, ending and all that stuff, guys, there's some news that I want to give to you guys. I'm thinking of dropping some merch. So far, I have made one shirt of the apparel that i may or may not be dropping there is two designs that i might be dropping number one my zether design which basically has me holding the rifle as well as the pink background and there's also the red one which is in the anime gradient my hero academia style like the character card version there is a post about that on my community tab if you guys are interested in some merch i will probably be dropping about 10 shirts that's it there will only be 10 pieces it'll be extremely limited however i will admit that everything probably will be a little pricey just because literally just the shirt by itself is probably going to cost like 20 dollars. getting the design on it like 10 maybe 20 and then shipping and stuff probably like 50 dollars for all of that so i might have to charge like 60 for it i'm still not sure i'm trying to see what i can do to maybe get you guys good quality stuff as well as affordable however if that is not possible i will be holding out on it but if you guys are willing to i may consider dropping the merch that being said let's get back into the story anyways this is when deku would of course arrive to the usj and no not the usj but the ua school festival and of course he would have not end up actually giving the speech because well you know he simply didn't take the entrance exam meaning that deku is not the winner therefore he doesn't have to give the speech leading to bakugo being the one who goes up there and just says i'm gonna win as you know everybody's just like oh come on and bakugo would just sit there looking as smug as ever just like yeah i said it what you gonna do think you can beat me 
like nobody in their like in reality can actually beat Bakugo, but you know that's just what he's thinking. <clears throat> that being said, Deku would basically just be there like it's oh, such a Bakugo thing to do, and this is when everybody would just be like, yeah, sounds about right. You know that sounds like something that that kid would do. As Bakugo is just sitting there, kind of taking all this stuff, he walks past Deku, gives him a stare, and then he walks by. This is when we are finally going to be covering the race. Of course, Midnight would be like, all right, guys, are you guys ready? The crowd would just go insane and she would, you know, she would, of course, pull the trigger, which releases the, the, uh, the, the little gun that the flare, the flare, right? The flare, which basically lets them all know that they need to start. This is when Deku's, the speed force inside Deku would activate and Deku would blitz straight to the finish line. I mean, what you would, what did you expect? It's literally the flash. He basically teleported over there and everybody within the blink of an eye just saw Deku appear. Everybody would just be so shocked and the rest of the placements are kind of irrelevant seeing as everybody just kind of gets the placements you would expect momo gets fourth place because you know she's not fast even though her quirk is great now and she has more combat experience she's still not fast that being said this is when deku would basically just be sitting there as he sees bakugo he would just be like so what's up slow poke bakugo would grit his teeth thinking that this kid just keeps getting faster and faster there must be a way to slow him down and uh bakugo that that there is, but, uh, you know, you're probably not going to be the one who discovers it. That being said, this is when I am now going to be covering the cavalry battle. However, I hate the cavalry battle with a passion. Like, like if, if I had to tell you guys how much I despise the cavalry battle as an event in and of itself, I would probably have like a 20 minute video just because, dude, it is so boring. And the fact that Deku even survived the cavalry battle is a straight up miracle. He survived that off of plot. This version of Deku, though, I'm just going to give a quick summary. He quite literally was the legs of the team. So he pretty much just ran so fast. He created a tornado around them, which didn't let anybody pretty much get close to them. And so they kept their headband. That being said, this is when the matches would begin. Deku versus Shinso, complete swap. Like, like just complete and utter sweep. Deku is so fast. Shinso didn't get a millisecond. To even look at Deku and be like, yeah, your quirk must be so amazing, bro. You know, must be nice. Deku didn't have to deal with any of that. He literally was not at all having any of that. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the mentality that a lot of people should have when anybody's just trying to bring you down. Just kind of like be like, dude, don't care. Don't have time to listen. And just like move, move past that. Okay, this is getting way too deep. Anyway, Deku would do that. As for the next match, of course, it is Todoroki. And per usual... He doesn't actually end up being like, are you all my secret love child? Yeah, that doesn't end up happening because, well, Deku doesn't have one for all. Therefore, there's zero, zero reason for Todoroki to suspect that. Leading to, well, them kind of just facing off against each other. Now, how do you think that Flash versus some kid who can use ice and fire would go down? If it was Barry Allen, he would lose because I don't know why. But they always make him lose to these weak meta humans, bro. Like, what? Bro, he literally has super speed. If he wanted to, he could blitz on in there before they even realize it. Knock them out. Uh, accelerator, just immediately. But no, you know, the show needs to be good. So therefore, you know, they make him be a little weaker. However, Deku, he has plot armor and a whole lot of it. He has Zethers plot armor. It's, it's thicker, tougher, and stronger than any plot armor you guys have ever seen. And so, Deku quite literally just phases straight through all the ice, runs around Todoroki so fast that there is zero oxygen, meaning that he does not have any ability to make any heat, therefore he has to rely purely on ice, and Todoroki would slam his foot down as ice would cover the arena, Deku would immediately just phase as the ice would go right through him, Deku would then blitz at Todoroki, and as he sees the look in Todoroki's eyes, he would just see kind of his own reflection, the hatred that he's been feeling for that man within Todoroki's eyes. Deku would stop, look at Todoroki and just say, you're just like me. Todoroki would look at Deku and say, what are you talking about? And Deku would just be like, uh, and then he would then immediately just stop moving. As Todoroki would shoot him with an iceberg, Deku 
would get hit by it he would drop to the ground and when the next one comes Deku would just phase right through it as Deku would go to Todoroki he would throw him out of the arena similar to the attempt that Saro did except his would actually be successful and that would lead to Deku versus Bakugo which is a one-sided stomp in this Bakugo quite literally before the match started yelled at Deku to give it his 100% if Bakugo doesn't win by a landslide or it's clear that he was going to be the victor that he doesn't want to win so if he's not ready to give it his all then he won't either Deku after hearing that would be like very well if that's what you want I'll be happy to oblige. He would look at Bakugo and blitz the man out of existence. He would grab Bakugo, throwing him so hard, Bakugo's body would quite literally indent into the UA uh, arena. The UA Sp Sports Festival arena, his body would indent into that, similar to a cartoon scene. I don't know if you guys have seen Scooby Doo, but when like Shaggy would just run through walls and be like, oh my god, that quite literally is what Bakugo had done to his body. That being said, Deku gets first place. Momo would end up not getting any of that because, well, you know, even though Momo is very powerful in this version of events, she ended up having to fight against Todoroki. And, uh, you know, you're probably not going to win if, you know, you got to fight against Todoroki. That being said, she, uh, you know, she's not up there in terms of where Deku is at. And with that being said, this is where... So we're going to pick this up off exactly where Zether left it with Izuku coming first in the sports festival and Midnight this time hands him his medal because if you forgot, All Might died. Rest in peace. But they were not going to dwell on any deaths because Izuku came first and he's going to celebrate with Caitlyn, Sisko, Momo, Harry and Iris, just everyone, they're going to go and celebrate for a bit. And when he goes to Star Labs, Harrison Wells gives him a massive hug and congratulates Izuku on his win and he was taken aback by this because he never knew Harrison Wells to be this friendly. And for the rest of the day, they had an amazing night and that being said, Deku would be going to school the next day and while he's walking to school with Momo, he sees a mugger robbing this old lady trying to rip her purse from her arms and Izuku seeing this just gets angry like how can he stoop this low to rob from the elderly and Izuku was mad he rushes in legit blitzing in there and beating him before he had a chance to even process what was going on. Izuku would then bind the mugger by his arms and legs and take him to one of the local police stations. You know, he super speeds there and super speeds back to Momo and they continue going to school. But the mugger, when they throw him into a jail cell, one of the quirk cancelling jail cells because they don't know what quirk he has, he could be dangerous. And when the guy wakes up, he's still able to use all of his quirks and his abilities and that's bad because it's supposed to be quirk cancelling. So they send him off to a research lab to study him and after doing multiple, multiple tests and referencing quirked people, they realize that this guy was quirkless before this certain date. So the researchers went to look like what happened, what significance happened on this date and they found that was when the accelerator happened and they realized quirk people weren't affected so there's probably hundreds of others who got a new power recently and they don't think it's weird they don't think they're special at all they just got their quirk early like they were a late bloomer but if any of these people are villains that could be bad for their entire prison system because the prison system is structured around the technology of cancelling quirks so if they're not able to do that then they can't take down these villains and one of these researchers in particular had a connection with star labs and this researcher knew that if he could get into contact with them they could probably be the best to develop this team of um, heroes to combat against these new villains, these metahumans. So back with Izuku in class and Aizawa, he comes and reveals all of the internship requests and Izuku has over 1000 requests and Momo has a close uh, amount to his, she has 800 and a bit. But the number doesn't really matter too much because they choose the same internship. They intern with the same person, Harrison Wells at Star Labs. So Izuku and Momo head over and when they arrive, they see this group of researchers leaving the building. And when they walk in, Harrison Wells sees them and says, oh, you guys just arrived just in time. And they, the both of them look at Caitlin and Sisko wondering what's going on. And they made a gesture to just listen to what he's about to say. 
So he explains the whole issue with the um, metahumans and how he's going to form Team Flash with Izuku, the leader of the team, hence the name Team Flash. So during his internship with Harrison Wells, Izuku would come across a lot of iconic villains from the CW Flash series like Leonard Snart and the guy with you know telekinetic abilities, cloning, um, the mist poison guy, but I barely know any of their names. But you know who I'm talking about. He comes across them and completely annihilates them. They don't even stand a chance because Izuku is only getting faster as the series goes on. And in the middle of capturing one of those villains, Hosu City is attacked by the League of Villains. And when he hears about this, Izuku, he's putting two and two together. He remembers Ida being on the phone and he was crying. Like back at the um, sports festival, he saw Ida crying and he heard later on that his brother was attacked by the hero killer Stain. And the city Stain is most like active in is Hosu City. So Izuku is hoping that Ida doesn't be a idiot and go after the hero killer by himself. But we all know Ida, he is an idiot. <laughs> So Izuku arrives on scene with Momo and they split up to take care of the Nomu um, scattered around the city and Izuku he would use his super speed like his punch with the super speed to completely just take care of these Nomus just punch them in the head that's where they regenerate from so that would just neg negate their regenerative ability. So after going around for a bit, Izuku has saved a lot of people and he's really unintentionally made himself famous around these parts in Hosu City. So this may or may not come back later, but Izuku goes around and he finally comes across Native and he's crawling out of an alleyway and Izuku runs up and says, uh, what happened? And Native says, that, that kid with some engines, he, he protected me. And Izuku's like, wait, engines? Wait, it, it must be Ida. So he looks up into the alleyway and he sees a knife, not a knife, a sword being held to Ida's throat. And Izuku immediately rushes in and punches the hero killer stain off of Ida. And he crouches down to Ida and says, are you stupid? Why did you try and take him down by yourself? And Ida said, stop, I, I can take care of this by myself. And Izuku, he knows that Ida is stubborn, so he's not gonna even argue with him. But as he's talking to Ida, the hero killer Stain recovers and he says, oh, you have the audacity to turn your back to me. And he runs towards Izuku and as he's about to hit him, his sword phases right through his body and Izuku speed blisses behind um, the hero killer Stain and then punches him rapidly like a hundred times in less than a second. And this causes the hero killer Stain to drop down unconscious and leaves Izuku time to save Ida, um, Native and to take in the hero killer stain and you know he has super speed he does this really quickly he takes him to a hospital takes him to the jail simple stuff after the whole sweet incident the press got onto this story saying how uh, UA is allowing its students to fight these dangerous villains because Izuku was caught on camera saving Ida and um, uh, native from the hero killer stain so right now tensions are high but they have to restart the school so they do and when they come back they want to test the students on what they've learned over their internship period so they have their rescue training race so everyone is at school and they go to one of the mock cities in their hero costumes and principal nezu is hidden somewhere in the city and it's their job to find him so the class split up in groups of five and each member of the groups would race against each other. So Izuku's group would consist of him, Ojiro, um, Sero, Mina and Froppy. And come on, if you have Flash and a race in the same sentence, the Flash is going to beat everybody in that race. So it wasn't even a competition to be honest for first place. It was just a competition for second because Izuku 100% takes first. So he does it in literally less than three seconds to find Nezu and Nezu is not even impressed at this point. This is just the norm for Izuku. So they just wait until everyone else catches up and then the other group goes, then the other, then the other and they return to class. Aizawa does a regular day of teaching but at the end of it, he tells them about their final exams. And hearing the word exams, people start stressing out so much, like they're starting to plan how they're gonna study, while people like Momo and Ida, they don't have a problem. 
So without getting into too much detail, you know, they all go off and study for a week or so. And when they come back to school, they do their um, final exams. Most of the scores don't change except for Izuku's, who is really high. Like Momo and Izuku top the um, intellectual part of the uh, final exams, like the written part. Momo getting first because she is smarter than Izuku and Izuku coming in second. And the next stage of their exams is they have to fight, but not only do they just fight robots because that that's what they heard from class 1B, but they have to fight their own teachers in groups of two. So it was Momo and Izuku versus Ectoplasm. And with Momo's and Izuku's brains on a team and his quirk, well not really quirk, but you know his abilities, this is a surefire win. They don't really have to struggle that much because Izuku just speeds to the gate and that's really it. They win. And after everyone goes, after they finish up their um, exams, people like Sato and Kirishima, they're worried because they lost so they won't be able to go to the forest with the rest of the class. But Aizawa tells them that they can, they just have to do extra work. So they do feel a bit better but extra work is extra work. So they all get about a week break until the forest training arc. And during this break, they just all go, they prepare for, you know, the forest. They have to buy like bug sprays, different types of clothes. And since they had some time to settle down, you know, Izuku and Momo got busy. Shopping, busy shopping, bro. Get your mind out of the gutter. So after all the preparations are made, UA sends its students away to the training camp over their summer break because of the growing threat of villain attacks like the USJ and the Hosu incident, they want them to be prepared so students need to be able to defend themselves from potentially more villain attacks and to get stronger to be able to acquire their provisional hero license in the future. So the bus ride was really long to the point where Momo fell asleep and just laid on Izuku's lap almost the entire time and Mineta is looking like, you're so lucky Izuku, I wish I had a girlfriend like that. So after about 6 hours, the bus finally arrives at this cliff and Izuku shakes Momo awake and they get outside the bus and start stretching and they start looking around and they're like, aren't we supposed to be at the camp? And Aizawa walks out of the bus and he says to his students, well, we are here. And out comes the wild, wild pussycats, you know, Mandalay, Pixie Bob, Ragdoll, and Tiger. And instead of talking to the students, explaining what they're going to do at the camp, Pixie Bob and Mandalay task the students with making their way to base camp by fighting through the forest, you know, against um, Pixie Bob's earth beasts. And as the avalanche is coming down, Izuku speeds and grabs Momo and they zip off to the base camp. And everyone has to spend over 8 hours fighting off Pixie Bob's monsters. So Izuku and Momo, they're at camp and they start like cooking up some food. So an hour when Aizawa and the Wild Wild Pussycats arrive, they're surprised to see them here. But Aizawa realized, oh, that's Izuku. And, uh, you know, Mandalay and Pixie Bob, they're asking what's his abilities. And Aizawa says, oh yeah, super speed. He probably picked Momo up and they just ran all the way here within like a second. And Mandalay hearing this, she's grown very curious of Izuku and his ability, but she can't really get too personal because Izuku is guarded by his girlfriend. So they all start cooking up some food and 8 hours later when class 1A finally arrives, they are exhausted, they can barely even walk. And when they came out of the forest and see Izuku and Momo just sitting down chatting, they get so mad but they can't really do anything, they are actually tired. They couldn't even attempt fighting either of them, plus they made them some food so they can't be too mad. So after that night, Izuku meets um, Kota and they start off with a really bad relationship. You know, Kota tries kicking him in the balls, but Izuku, that's not gonna happen to him. He is way too quick. So Kota just runs away because he didn't get to actually do it and now he's embarrassed and Izuku doesn't really care. So after everyone eats, they shower and they head off to, um, you know, they head off to sleep because they have a long day of training tomorrow. So on the first day of the training camp, Shota brings his class to a cliffside and has Bakugo throw a ball with his quirk like he did during the quirk apprehension test 
And to everyone's shock, Kotsky only managed to throw the ball only a few meters further than he did during the fitness test despite so much time having passed since then. So Aizawa explains that the students have improved through technical skills, stamina and mental prowess but their quirks have not improved all, all that much. So later that same morning, Vlad Kings wake up his students and explain that they will improve their quirks by pushing them beyond their limits. And for day two, that's entirely what they do. Like for Todoroki, he had to sit in a hot bath and shoot out fire and ice while people like Sero had to shoot out his tapes constantly. Just, you know, things like that they had to do for the entire day. And when day 3 rolls around, they have to do the test of courage in the afternoon and this is where everything goes south. This is when the Vanguard Action Squad arrives. And I shouldn't really say everything goes south because these guys, they are mopped up by Izuku. Like for instance, the guy with the bunch of teeth and they're like blades. Izuku just comes in and punches him with super speed, breaking all of his teeth. And he does that repeatedly until the guy's down for the count. And he does this for basically everyone there. But something he wasn't expecting was the leader of the League of Villains himself. Not Shigaraki, the false leader. I mean, well... Is kind of, it depends on how you look at it, but I mean, it doesn't really matter all that much. So, all for one, he comes out because he sees all of his subordinates being taken down with relative ease. And he comes and faces Izuku. And Izuku is like, huh, so you want a piece of this as well? So he runs in and tries to punch all for one over and over, but nothing happens. And similar to one of Overhaul's lackeys, he had a force field quirk so he put barriers upon barriers not just one there were like 10 duplicated in front of each other and Izuku he tries running in and punching the barrier over and over but nothing happens and Izuku thought this wouldn't really be the end for him and his entire class and soon Izuku realized all for one was similar to him he had, had tapped into the speed force as well. So All For One was taking Izuku down, like beating him down with all of his quirks and Izuku couldn't do anything about it. And as he was on the verge of death, Izuku saw for a split second the streak of yellow in front of his eyes and then this streak formed into the shape of a man behind All For One and he said, I can't let you do that, he's my ticket home. And he shoved his hand through All For One, killing him almost instantaneously. He throws All For One to the side like he was nothing but trash and he stood over Izuku ready to deal with him himself. Deku would crawl back as he says, it was, it was you, the night that my mother died, that was, that was you in the yellow lightning. As Reverse Flash would step over Deku, he would proceed to kick him straight in the ribs, shattering three or four of them. As Deku would scream out in pain, Momo would come running in and, and he, the Reverse Flash would go over to her. As he would proceed to stick his hand straight through Momo's chest, he would then give a smile right towards Deku's direction. As Deku would look at him and be like, no, no, this is when immediately the reverse flash would finish the job. And it's at this point that Deku would yell, no, as you can hear that all the way to the heavens, Deku would rush at the reverse flashes. He would say, how could you? As he would simply smile and, and run away as he would say, it is not time for our race quite yet. As it's at this point that Deku would literally try to chase the reverse flash. However, when he tries, he would literally trip Deku. And as soon as Deku falls, he elbows him straight in the back of the head, knocking him out. Deku at this point would wake up about two hours later. And this is when he would wake up in a hospital. He's like, where am I? It was, it was a dream. Everybody in the class would be looking down as they look at Deku and Deku sees the condition that his body's in. He would say, no, 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 this can't be happening. As everybody in the class just looks at him and says, we're sorry we weren't strong enough to help you, Deku, but Momo, she's, she's gone. Deku would hear that and immediately throw off all the all the equipment that's onto him. He would take out the IB and he would immediately just rush out of the hospital. As Deku would go for a run, he would just run in one straight direction back 
back and forth he would just run at one straight direction he would just keep running trying to burn off as much steam as he possibly can and Deku would just continue struggling with what he just saw Momo's death it would replay in his mind hundreds no thousands of times and Deku would just not be able to wrap his head around this it's at this point that Deku's tears would just start overwhelming him and Deku would fall to his knees as he would slam his fist into the ground and say it's not fair why he took my mom from me my father and momo what's he gonna do next take my father away as he would then think my father momo's dad how are they as he would immediately rush over there he would begin to run as fast as he can and as deku would run there he would blitz faster than he's ever ran before at that point deku would break the speed barrier and he would open a portal which would lead him back in time by one day and yup you guys know exactly what's about to happen. Deku would go back in time, about one day prior to all of these events. And this is when Deku would rush outside as he would see himself and he would slowly start to disappear. Deku would simply just be like, huh? And it's at this point that Deku would basically just be <clears throat> right, right with Momo as Deku would just gone to the bathroom real quick. Deku would see himself fade away. He would then realize what's going on. And it's at this point that he would look at Momo as he would tear up and hug her and she would say, what's going on? Deku would look at her and she's just like, it's, it's nothing. I just, I, I can't believe you're still, as Momo would say, still what? What are you? And Deku would say, what day are we on? As she would tell him that it's the same day that Momo died. Deku, after hearing that, would just say, I must have traveled so fast that I opened a barrier between space time and I must have traveled back in time. Deku would have immediately put the pieces back together and it's at this point that he would immediately go to Star Labs as he would begin to tell Harrison Wells about everything that happened. He would tell him that he ran so fast he must have went back in time and this is when he would proceed to tell Deku not to tell him anything that happened as he would say you are going to do everything that happened on this day and you are going to do it exactly as it just happened. If you change events in history, horrible things will happen and the world and timeline will figure some way for everything to go back to how everything should have been. This is when Deku would say that that's not possible and that nothing bad will come from it. As he would smile, he would then race out of there as Harrison Wells would just sit there and kind of facepalm as he would take his glasses off and just be like, that kid... I better stop him. He would immediately call him and tell him not to be hasty with anything and to do everything as he had told him because one small change could change the entirety of the timeline. As Deku would just tell him that it was just a couple of hours, what big changes could happen? He would then say that, I mean, he doesn't understand how timeline works and Deku would just say that he doesn't need to be babied. He's grown enough to make his own decisions. This is when Deku would proceed to basically just have the same events that happened during the daytime. He would proceed to have some food. And this is when during the nighttime, they would basically proceed to have a little bit of a nighttime um, uh, events. This is when the Vanguard squad would come. And Deku would, of course, just like in the original timeline, would proceed to just school all of them. He would, of course, take out Moonfish relatively easily. He would shoot his, well, razor sharp teeth at Deku, and Deku would basically phase through him as he would go over there and uppercut him, sending him straight into a tree. As it's at this point that Deku would grab his limp body and smack him into Dobby, right into Dobby's flames. As Dobby would slowly burn him, Deku would then run over to Twice and say, This is it nothing i've dealt with your kind before as he would grab him and just knock him out proceeding to Dob as dobby would basically proceed to turn into sludge revealing that dobby was a cl i mean uh no but uh mm, what's his name middle mr dupe uh the guy who can multiply i forgot his name i'm so dumb but yeah he would take him out immediately and deku would then be like he was a he was a clone what this is this is impossible this is when he would basically proceed to look towards the other opponents and he would knock out dobby dobby before he even knows what hit what hits him this is when he would proceed to take everyone else out and this is when a portal would open as deku would immediately realize what's going on before all for one would even get the chance to like even create his barriers deku would immediately blitz it all for one and completely sh just just punch at the barrier as no, and punch had offer one's mask as offer one would get punched miles away. This one offer one would stand back up. He would put up over some 
some barriers and Deku will try to punch away. However, this is where I will be retconning something that Izukage said on his little portion of the video. On Izu's part, he ended up saying that All For One tapped into the Speed Force. However, he kind of messed up on what I told him was the explanation for quirks and metas. See, the way that things work is that quirk people genetically cannot develop metahuman abilities due to the fact that they already have a sort of kind of abilities you know it would just not make sense for quirk people to also get metahuman abilities that would just be i mean it's broken i mean yeah deku could still handle it but it's like it wouldn't make sense and that would probably alter the genetic code on a like a horrible level so the way that it works is basically if you don't have a quirk you have the potential the potential to be affected by the dark matter meaning that about half of the quirkless quirkless people were actually gifted with metahuman abilities and like a giant percentage of them didn't do anything because well they live in a superhuman society that being said all for one is unable un completely unable to access the speed force meaning that when izukage said he accessed that that didn't really happen all for one just whooped izuku without having any of those like speed force abilities but you know all for one can still do that he's he's pretty broken i mean barry allen lost the people who are so who are just incredibly weak and it just comes to show that that super speed will not always secure you the dub that being said deku would run away about 50 miles as deku would say that he's not gonna let what happened to momo happen today as he would rush at him he would literally break the space-time continuum and move as fast as savitar as he would punch straight through the barrier it would be 20 barriers in his way as he would shatter each and every single one of them and quite literally penetrate straight through all for one's heart as he would say that this time he's not gonna weaken him and this time he's gonna stop the reverse flash as it's at this point that he would arrive right behind Deku and go to hit him but Deku would have been ready for this he would dodge the attack and immediately punch him straight in the ribcage shattering his entire left side as the reverse flash would be stunned sent straight to the ground Deku would look at the reverse flash as he would say you're not gonna kill her this time or any time as it's at this point that he would shove his hand straight through the reverse's, ver, reverse flash's hand and crush his heart as the reverse flash would fade away this is when Deku would say now let's see what you look like as he would unmask the reverse flash this is when he would see that it was it was Harrison Wells they never ended up figuring out Cisco never figured it out he never turned into vibe Caitlyn never turns into killer frost meaning that none of those other uh events in the original flash story ended up happening due to the way that i will progress this story that being said after realizing that deku would have one more realization he would fall to his knees as he would realize that he never got a confession from this man therefore his father will be stuck rotting in prison for the rest of his life deku the very next day deku at that point would basically pass out due to exhaustion and the very next day he would wake up and see momo as she would be right by his bedside deku would smile at her as he tells her that he's so glad to see her this is when deku would start crying and say that he took out the man who you know wrongfully imprisoned his father but he never got a confession and momo would get sad as well as she would say that she understands how he feels deku would say that you know she possibly she couldn't possibly understand but he knows what she means as he would basically give her a hug momo would give deku the biggest hug and tell him that she understands how he how he must be feeling right now and if he needs time she can give him that deku would hug her tightly and say that it's not what he needs what he needs right now is her and it's at this point that he would go to star labs and tell caitlin and cisco what happened the events of the force training arc would get covered up by ua due to the fact that if it doesn't get covered up this would most definitely require sh the, the shutdown of ua so that would happen therefore nobody would find out that deku killed two men that day and that being said this is when deku would arrive at star labs as he would see the message that harrison wells left to deku freeing deku's father hisashi midoriya and this is when they would basically have the provisional hero license exams deku would be extremely happy to see his father once again seeing as he just hasn't been able to spend time with him he lost his father and now that he's free he's going to be spending as much time as he possibly can with his father 
either. That being said, they would take the provisional license exam and seeing as Deku quite literally has the ability to zoom through everything, including the nutty nutty, Deku would proceed to, well, just obliterate everyone. And with that being said, the big three would be introduced with Mirio, of course, walking in the crash room, just being like, hey, y'all trying to fight again? As Deku would look at Mirio, he'd be like, you, you ready for that round two? Mirio would be like, ah, and then, wait, wait, no, 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 I'm thinking of Izukage's what if. Oh, I am so dumb. I was thinking of Izukage's what if Deku was Kratos, because I watched that earlier. But anyways, enough plugging. I'll I'll maybe link that right, right here on this point, or if not, you guys can just go watch it on your own time. That being said, Deku would basically look at Mirio and just be like, huh, it's going to be pretty fun. As he would literally, instead, as soon as he starts fighting Mirio, he would just get whooped. And this is when Nedre would hop in and she would shoot energy beams at Deku. Deku would phase right through them and he would rush over to Nedre as Tamaki would create, he would basically turn, turn into a centaur with like squid arms and he would rush at Deku because he would kick him away. However, Deku would phase through him, grab him by the throat, and throw him at Nedre. As Nedre would get caught off guard, Deku would start spinning into a, as in a circle as he would throw a lightning bolt straight at Mirio however he would phase right through it and Deku would get caught off guard with an uppercut from Mirio straight to the jaw it's at this point that Deku would stop playing all these games and he would ramp up his speed so fast that in an instant all three of them would be on the ground just completely bloodied and battered Deku would stand there with a smile on his face with Momo realizing that this dark aura to Deku she would ask him what's going on and Deku would say that he was just blowing off some steam. He still isn't over the death of Momo and the fact that the reverse flash ruined his life. And now that he knows he can time travel, he's been contemplating the thought of maybe going back to that night. However, he doesn't know what the ramifications would be. Maybe he might never meet Momo or something like that. However, Deku would realize that, you know, he met Momo far before, so that's definitely a possibility. And this... This is where we're going to be ending off. What if Deku had the speed force? See, of course, some of you guys are probably going to be like, what about the overhaul arc? And to that, I say, dude, Deku just blitzes overhaul, bro. The second that Deku sees a girl in fear to a man who just ruined her life, he would see that just that those eyes that Deku had when he saw his mother die that night. And Deku would show no mercy. Deku would quite literally blitz Overhaul and throw him in jail before Overhaul has time to react. Shutting down his entire operation. And at this point, Deku would begin to contemplate whether he's going to go back in time. And this is where I'm going to be leaving off the series. Due to the fact that I don't know whether this is where I'm going to be leaving everything off. Or if I'm going to basically do a little bit of a flashpoint point of view where Deku goes back in time and we basically retell this entire story me and Izukage if he's down and you know with that being said that's basically where we're going to be ending what if Deku had the speed force if you guys enjoyed this little series that we did me and Izukage definitely go check out his content as well as subscribe leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video did you like it did you not did you like the way that you know the quirk system and metahuman system work did you like the characters that I added Added, and do you like my versions of storytelling that being said it has been your boy zether guys i love each and every single one of you guys and i am out peace